Hey everyone, so today I'm going to showcase my white floral fragrances. I have quite a few and I will be covering various subcategories of that uh, scent family. I have some lilies, some jasmine fragrances, some orange blossom, and a few other categories that I want to show you. Let's start off with the note of jasmine, and that's actually one of my favorite notes of all time. I love the fruitiness of it. I love the smell of real jasmine bushes, especially star jasmine. That's probably my favorite type to smell. Um, I love drinking teas that are scented with that flower as well. But a few people in my life cannot stand the way that jasmine smells, so these are ones that I wear for myself on days when I'm just, you know, hanging out home by myself. So I have A La Nuit from Serge Dutens, and this is my benchmark jasmine fragrance. It's the one that I compare other jasmine fragrances to. Uh, this had been released a while ago. And it was made with Christopher Sheldrick, and I love how he and Serge Dutens make really realistic white florals. So A La Nuit is quite bitter at first, uh, but it does mellow out, and it really gives me a realistic uh, depiction of this flower. So I really, really love this. Next is this beast here, Lust from Lush. This is quite a polarizing fragrance. If you hate jasmine, it's almost guaranteed that you would not like this one. Uh, it's very fruity. It really amplifies that part of the jasmine flower smell. It's quite sweet too and very syrupy. This one um, is a beast as I'd mentioned because it performs really well. It projects a lot off of my skin. And it's one that I like to wear if I want to feel very extroverted and I want to smell like jasmine. Next is Narciso Poudre from Narciso Rodriguez, and um, this is not my most favorite from the house. I actually prefer the ones that uh, Francis Carjan and Christine Agel made. This one was made by Aurélien Guichard, and it's fine. Um, I actually do enjoy wearing this to work sometimes, even though it can be quite strong, but there is something about it that seems very put together. It is quite powdery. I get more of an abstract take of jasmine. It's not as realistic as the other two that I had mentioned. And in the base, I get quite a bit of woodsiness from vetiver and um, I think there's cedar, like a synthetic cedar note. So if I want something abstract, not the most realistic take on that floral note, that's, this is what I reach for. Let's talk about orange blossom next. And I will focus on that note instead of neroli because neroli does tend to come off as very green on me. Um, so even though they are extracted from the same flower, it just smells completely different to me. Uh, so orange blossom fragrances that I like include this one, Neroli Blanc Montance. Uh, so even though it does say Neroli in the name, as I had mentioned in a previous video, this smells more like orange blossom to me. The way that the orange blossom smells in this is more candy-like and it does become more vanillic and musky towards the dry down. It does have a bit of the gourmandy nuances, um, but it's still mainly an orange blossom fragrance to me. So I like this one. I did get a few questions asking how this compares to Killian's Love Don't Be Shy. I can't give a fair comparison because I haven't fully tested Love Don't Be Shy as much as this one. I have tried that Killian fragrance before though, but from what I can remember, the Killian fragrance is a lot sweeter. It's more marshmallowy to me. Uh, this is quite sweet already. So this is at my threshold for what I look for in a sweet fragrance. So that's why I reached for this um, than the Killian fragrance. But I mean, you should give both a try. I can't really give you a fair comparison between the two. And the other orange blossom fragrance I have is this one. This is a mini bottle of Le Danger from Serge Dutens. This is a very full bodied orange blossom fragrance. Orange Blossom tends to be quite delicate, but in this one, the cumin really adds this fullness to it. There is quite a bit of tuberose too when I first dab this on, but when it dries down, it definitely turns into more of an Orange Blossom fragrance. I really like this one. I don't think I'll buy a full bottle. I think this size is enough for me. I actually have another sample of this too somewhere, so I think I have more than enough 
for me. The next category isn't a single note, but I wanted to group them together, these two together, because they share some similarities. So the category I'm going to call this is the coconutty white floral. Uh, so first is the Toro Noir from Serge Dutton's, and I did do a full review, I'll link that here, so I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about this, but even though it's supposed to smell like the Tura, I don't know what that flower smells like, it smells like a coconutty tuberose to me. I really enjoy this, and it's my most worn fragrance of this summer. And then the other one is Kai, I have a perfume oil, and this is the Gardenia fragrance from this line. And it's not the most realistic floral fragrance, I would say, but I like this because it does give me tropical vibes. It's very coconutty. The gardenia is there, but it's not the best type of solid floral fragrance for that flower. But I really enjoy this, and I take this on travel. Next is the lily flower, and I love that flower a lot. I think it's such a beautiful smell. It's quite sweet and I don't associate it with funerals. Luckily, I know a lot of people do, but um, I don't think about death when I smell these. So first is Only. This is probably the most realistic out of the three that I'm going to show you. It's quite green. It kind of reminds me a bit of a garden. Um, it, it does have that lily smell too, kind of like that vanillic tinge to it, but it's almost like this gentle, sugary, floral type of smell. So I really like this a lot, and I've been wearing this quite a lot lately. Next is Cartier's Baiser Volet. Love the bottle. And this is, I think, one of my husband's favorites to smell on me. Every time I put this on, he just randomly tells me I smell really good, which is surprising because I thought he doesn't like white florals that much. But this is more vanillic than Only. It doesn't smell as realistic, but I could still tell it's trying to represent that lily flower. And it does it quite well. It has the green notes too. And that sweetness from the flower. Really minimalistic, but I really enjoy that fragrance a lot. And obviously I have to feature one of my favorites, Blondine from Frisai. This is the least like Lily out of these three because there's so much going on in this one. It's more of a gourmandish take on the Lily flower. Also the Lily that's in this, I think uh, they didn't take from the white Lily flower. There's another type of Lily that they, uh, I think, extracted from or that they were trying to replicate. But it still gives me the white floral type of vibe. Um, a lot of people, when they smell this blindly, they they identify that lily flower from it. So that's the main flower I get from this. And then there's also almost like a caramelly type of smell to it without being too sweet. There's also a suede type of texture to this too. And then the musks, as I wear this throughout the day, it just blends in so perfectly with the skin. I really love this one and it kind of makes me feel like a fairy tale princess when I wear it. There's something quite magical about this. The next floral note is similar to Lily, except it's not. It's Lily of the Valley. They're completely different flowers. In fact, if you were to see them in real life, you'll see how different they look. Uh, they do have some similarities, but I would say Lily of the Valley smells more green to me. And I think most of the time, if not all the time, uh, when perfumers make fragrances that want to replicate that Lily of the Valley smell, they can't extract it from the flower. They kind of have to figure out how to make accords to represent that smell. The two that I have here are actually the same fragrance but different concentrations. I have Giovissimo in the EDT and then I have it in the Eau de Cologne which is discontinued now. You can't get this concentration anymore, I don't think, at least here in the States. Uh, but both, I think, are the best representation of this flower. I've smelled other fragrances that try to replicate that flower and it just doesn't come close to me. This does get a bit indolic in the beginning. It almost smells like jasmine to me in the beginning, but then it gets more green as it dries down. I like both of them. I would prefer wearing the EDC during the summer because it is a lot lighter. Although this can be quite sharp when I first spray it. I get a lot of alcohol when I uh, spray this, though I don't know if it's because it's 
quite old. Um, but this one I do like to wear when it is a little bit cooler because it is more full bodied. Both of them are quite sweet, uh, but more of a natural floral sweetness, not gourmandy sweet at all. Uh, and they both have the greenness that I expect to get from Lily of the Valley too. Uh, this one, I get a little hint of civet when it dries down. Not like a full on pissy or poopy civet, but it, it kind of adds a bit of full bodiness to this. The last category is what I'd like to call the Chanel White Floral Blend. And I'll explain why when I talk about them. First I have Gardenia. I could have probably made my own category to feature the Gardenia fragrances here, but this does not smell like real Gardenia to me. I actually get a blend of different white florals in this, like Lilies, Lily of the Valley, Jasmine, maybe Gardenia, but not a realistic take on it. Uh, I actually do like this though, because it is quite different from other Chanel fragrances I've tried. I have the current formulation of the EDP. I don't know what the original one smelled like, but the one I have is a lot more, for lack of a better word, friendly compared to other Chanel fragrances I have and tried. A lot of times the fragrances from this house can be quite aloof, but I don't get that from here. It's very innocent smelling. It's like you're walking on clouds when you smell this and uh, it's non-offensive, at least to, to my nose. There is something delicate about this too, to the point where when I wear it, I kind of want to protect it and keep it safe. But yeah, this is a really beautiful fragrance. Not groundbreaking, not the most unique, but I enjoy it. And then there is number 22 from Chanel. And I do have the X-Gray. This is mostly an aldehydic floral to me. I get quite a lot of aldehydes in this. Uh, but the white florals in this is quite dominant. I get a blend of different white florals like lilies and jasmine, a bit of tuberose maybe. But the thing that I also like about this is the incense that runs through the entire fragrance. So it's quite a churchy type of fragrance without being too austere. Uh, there is something angelic about this and I love that about this fragrance. I like wearing this to bed or if I just want to feel clean and put together. So those are my white floral fragrances. I only wanted to talk about the ones that really had a dominant note of white florals. Uh, there are some other ones I own that might feature different notes like jasmine and tuberose and things like that, but they're not at the forefront. So that's why I didn't talk about them here. But let me know in the comments below what your favorite white floral fragrances are. I'd love to know. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.